So finally, the most benefic of all planets, Jupiter, will be conjunct its enemy. <laughs> but which is also a supposedly another benefic planet, which is Venus in the sign of Pisces, which is the own sign of Jupiter, but is also the exaltation sign of Jupiter. So it's a very peculiar conjunction or a very peculiar placement rather uh, for Venus in Pisces. Now, there are many theories uh, behind why does Venus get exalted in Pisces, uh, why not in some Rajasic sign which is like a Libra or maybe Aquarius or Gemini or any other sign, maybe even Taurus, right? Uh, why not on these signs? But uh, why why does it get exalted in Jupiter sign and uh, that to its enemy sign, right? So. Now, Jupiter and Venus, they're enemies, but they're also very contradictory sometimes. Yet, they have a lot of similarities. Like, both of them represent, you know, pleasure. Uh, I mean, not just gross materialistic pleasure. It can be spiritual pleasure also. Uh, like, Venus represents the romantic and uh, physical aspects of a married life. And then Jupiter represents uh, children. Venus represents the wife and Jupiter represents the husband. So, very similar yet very different. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the conjunction of Jupiter and Venus is a very interesting conjunction irrespective of the sign because uh, this, this planetary conjunction tells us that it is okay to be happy in material life but life is much beyond all this. So, whenever Jupiter and Venus are conjunct, if you are enjoying materially, which is fine within the scriptural limits, uh, then there's no problem. But if you try to go beyond that, if you try to enjoy recklessly, then there will be a voice inside you which will always keep telling you, oh yeah, you know, maybe this is not good, I should not do it. And the more you listen to this, the more you will feel uh, guilty for doing unrestricted sense enjoyment. And this will also be more profound if in your date of birth you have three somewhere or you have six somewhere. Or if you have both, then this will be very, very, very profound. So it means like if you are born on 3rd or 13th or 21st or in March or 1993, 1983 or you know you are born on 6th, 15th or 24th or june or 1986 96 or your destiny number is either three or six which is you know the sum of all the numbers in your date of birth <clears throat> and if you have both so if you are like uh, third of june or sixth of march 1963 1936 born then it's much more okay or if you have three but your destiny is six or if you have six but your destiny is three then also it becomes very prominent so for example you're born on sixth of any month or year but if you add up it becomes three so uh, you will see that for these people uh, if adding added apart from these these numbers in the data but if they have jupiter venus conjunction then they will feel this more and Adding to that, if they have this in uh, Pisces, so somebody has Jupiter and Venus uh, in Pisces and they have three or six or both, best case both, then they will, they will always feel this. So this conjunction can be a very, very, very materialistic conjunction sometimes. It can be hyper materialistic. It can be, uh, it, it can make you very vulnerable to enjoyment and not enjoyment rather pleasure you know <clears throat> like it can be quick time pleasure it can be something like oh i want it now and, I, and i'm always in this quest for happiness and search for enjoyment now if you go to the vedanta sutra this says uh, the vedanta, vedanta sutra says ananda which means 
the living entity is constantly constantly not today not yesterday not tomorrow constantly searching for pleasure constantly no doubt never ending it's like a never ending quest for pleasure <clears throat> so when the living entity is searching uh, then this means that there is a fundamental problem because the material world is the world of limitations. If you see, uh, just think of your favorite desert. <laughs> How many deserts can you have in one day? Maybe 10 deserts. Maybe, okay, let's go to 20. But what about after 20? Maybe 30, 40? Or maybe you can take 50 deserts at the maximum in a day. Nobody can take more than that. Of course, there can be some Guinness uh, Book of World Records who has taken, you know, 100 sweets, maybe that's possible, but I'm talking for general people. But the problem is the desire is not satiating. We want to indulge more and more and more. So then what happens is, even if you indulge unlimitedly, then there is a bodily problem, you get disease. And so many other problems will come. You know, you will have mood fluctuations because of this sugar up and down. So you'll be unhappy at the end of the day. So your goal was to become happy. Your goal was actually not to enjoy the desert. Your goal was actually to become happier. This is very important for us to understand. What is our goal? Our goal is to be happy at the end of the day. So that's not a problem. But the problem is we think that by eating something or by indulging in something, we will become happy, which is correct in one sense. You know, there is some level of happiness in that. There, nobody can deny that. It's very uh, artificial and fake and false to say that there is no happiness. Uh, there is no pleasure in material things. No, it is there. But the problem is it's not there to the extent that we become happy. It is only there to the extent we feel a bit satisfied. But the scriptures give the example of uh, a man who is very thirsty. And you put one drop of water on his tongue. What happens? Imagine a very thirsty. But you can drink only one drop of water. What happens? Oh my God, you have now taken this water and your thirst has increased a million times. Your frustration has increased. Your anger has increased. Your frustration has increased. That was even better maybe, hypothetically, sarcastically, even better than not drinking any drop of water, right? So that's how the material world is. It's like, the desires are endless, but the avenues to fulfill it is very limited. Very, very, very limited. Very limited. Because of that, what happens? There is frustration. Now, the Bhagavad Gita says when lust is fulfilled, uh, then, I mean, then, then it becomes greed, right? And when lust is not fulfilled, what happens? Mm -hmm. It turns into anger, anger, frustration. So, have you seen somebody who is always angry, always frustrated, always like, you know, beating around people mentally, physically, verbally? It just means they're frustrated in life. Their desires are not fulfilled. You know, they have this longing, craving of something or of somebody, but it's not getting fulfilled. The problem is not that they have desire. The problem is they are looking in the wrong place. <laughs> so, we have to understand from the scriptural context that there are certain, that certain things are in the gray zone. Gray means certain things are allowed to, to a certain extent and beyond that it is not allowed. Beyond that it go, goes to the black zone. Now, Best is if you can be fully in white, but that may not be practical for everybody or for somebody for all time to come. So you you will never always be in the white. So your life will consist of shades of gray, but 
it's best it's in our best interests if we avoid the black zone so therefore like let's take the example of you know indulging with the opposite sex so the scriptures they encourage uh, marriage they say okay you you want uh, emotional comfort or you know physical indulgence love romance and all then well fine no problem get married but only with one person that's what uh, the scriptures say of course uh, in the vedic times there was polyandry and polygamy to some extent sometimes to a large extent but uh, in kaliuga that's forbidden marrying more than one that's not permitted <laughs> because uh, in kaliuga the level of sense control is at all time low so if the scriptures would permit people okay go and marry how many ever you want then what would happen where well, it would end up in a disaster because <laughs> and nobody would stay married because in kaliuga the tendency is to run away from commitment therefore you will always see people they they will uh, indulge physically but they will not be in a committed relationship and even if they are in a committed relationship they will not get married you will see this with both men and women unfortunately and they are fueling up each other okay running away from commitment oh i have other things to do in life right what about uh marriage you know i don't have time for all this you know but yeah i have a partner and you know <laughs> nonetheless so then if we indulge recklessly without any commitment then that goes to the black zone that is dangerous because that will drag us down to the level of animals and that will make us very 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 animalistic there will be no order in the society it will be full of chaos and it will be destroyed eventually so similarly eating for example the scriptures encourage to eat you know fresh food nicely cooked vegetarian food uh, but meat eating best if we can avoid and then if you want to become more sattvic you know go to a higher spiritual plane then best is we give up onion garlic also and other things like tea coffee or anything which has intoxication which pulls us down then there is all this you know smoking drinking these are all completely black okay best is to give up them completely but you know then there are within that there are certain gray things you know, like for example onion and garlic it is actually black but it, you can still say it's somewhere in between you know if you can avoid on meat and then take onion garlic that's better if you can avoid that and take vegetarian food then that's even better and within that also you know there's like you take food with lot of chili or very rich food that is not very good that's somewhere in the darkish zone but that's not black you can take sometimes uh, but make sure that's vegetarian even if you take it very rich you know some very heavy highly stuffed north indian food or nawabi food you know it's like very rich and very austere i mean very rajasic it's too much luxury so then what happens is the principle of austerity is violated and we we, we cannot maintain our com commitments any time you go to a party in the night you eat like heavy meal it's like you know stuck and stuffed what happens the next day oh my god you 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 want to do your mantras but your eye is not opening you know one eye is opening the other is not <laughs> or you want to go to the gym or you want to do surya namaskar nothing works the next day right mm -hmm. so therefore we have to be mindful of what we eat what we who we associate with our friends our not just our friends right it's like who we share our hearts with you may friends relatives family members whoever they are but we have to understand that if they are not helping us grow spiritually then they are just dragging us down materially that's all material life is by default down it's always downhill it's going downhill always just see any house that has not been maintained what happens downhill becomes dirty anybody who is not taking care 
of uh, studies, you know, fail. Anybody who is not taking care of health, they may die. Anybody not taking care of career, they may be fired or they may lose money, right? So by default, things are going down. By default, it's the standard setting. It's going down. Every moment, it's going down. Every moment, you have to climb the ladder up. Only then things stay normal at best. And if you work very hard, then you go above. So it's not very easy to stay in the material world. It's, it's, it's a tough job. <laughs> so therefore... <clears throat> If at all uh, we have these conjunctions, then we have to understand that life has to be beyond these things uh, after a certain point. You know? Like, for example, uh, you you studied and then you got a job and then you got married, you bought your car, you bought your home, you had one, two children. And then now you are in your 30s or maybe 40s or maybe in your 50s and then now you realize, oh, what's next? It's it seems there, there's nothing else. <laughs> Until the time you do not have all this, I, I see people all the time, you know, they're like, oh, those who are not married, you know, when will I get married? Those who are students doing internship, when will I get that job? Finally, those who are doing bachelors, they have a job, they ask him, when will I do masters in America or in Germany? <laughs> Or, you know, they're asking, will I get, get get into IAS or IPS or, you know, IIM or IIT? You know, th these are questions. And then after 25, you know, they're like, oh, when will I get married, 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 married? And then after that, oh, when will I buy a car, 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 car? Then when will I have home, 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 home? Then when will I have children, 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 children one, children, two, children, three? <laughs> Which is perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with uh, having... Uh, a married life or having uh, your children, your car, your house or job or education, nothing wrong with it, perfectly fine. But that's not going to satisfy you. The sooner you realize this, the happier you will be. The later you realize this, the more miserable you will be. Sooner or later, we have to realize this. So why not behave in a way that we understand things. And how do we understand if we uh, read the scriptures, we associate with saintly people, with sadhus, with spiritual community in the weekends. Only then we can understand this, you know. Otherwise, if you just hear once or twice somewhere, it's not going to work. Because as I said, by default, the material world, everything is downhill. It's Spirituality is also downhill. Dharma is going down. Every moment it's going down. So therefore, uh, if you have this conjunction, then maybe you can cherish that you have the capacity to look beyond material things. Or maybe uh, you will be too much stuck in the material realm if you are indulging in the black zone. So therefore, try your best to be happy, as I said, you know, have a good education, have a good profession, have a good married life. Have a good car, have a good home, have a good, have good children, have good relationship with your parents, with your family, friends, have good association with people in society. But do not neglect your spiritual life, your spiritual commitments, uh, members of the spiritual community. That is the only area where we will get eternal happiness. Or else, by default, the material world is doomed at the end. At the end, anyways, everything is taken away from us. So this statement is not to discourage us from uh, running behind wealth, but we have to understand that wealth is important, but it's not all in all. So when wealth is a part of life and we use it for the right reasons, very good. Wealth is excellent. Nothing wrong with it. But when we uh, make uh, wealth as the center of life, but sole purpose of life, well, then misery comes. And then we are left with nothing or nobody and we are unhappy to the core. All right. So look at your life and see how you can do spiritual practices more and more. Use this conjunction and that will benefit you. All right.
Thank you very much for your patience. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your friends, family members, relatives and colleagues. And if you want a consultation from me, my website is down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him, especially during this conjunction in the sign of Pisces. Thank you.